guys, it is me in the bathroom again. <laughs> um, my hearing is a little weird. I just got out of the mountains and you know like when you get pressure on your ears and when you come down the mountains and then you can't really hear, I feel like they're all plugged with water. Anyway, so if I'm not sounding right, that's why because I can't really hear. But I wanted to, this video is going to go up a little later than I would like it to, but I'm going to get it up today, hopefully. Um, I wanted to come and do my update on Jackson's appointment, what we found out. He did get a diagnosis, well, three different diagnoses, 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 I don't know, I got orange fingers too. Anyway, so the appointment took about two hours this morning, and excuse me um he kind of had some meltdowns during the appointment but for the most part it went really well he did really really good there and I felt like they were really thorough they asked lots of questions they tried interacting with him as much as they could it's kind of hard with him sometimes um, so for those who are new uh, he had a diagnosis of sensory processing disorder last year and I constantly have this feeling that there's more to it and I just wasn't sure exactly. My mind kept kind of going towards autism and like PDD, NOS and that kind of stuff. Um, I also had like ADD in the back of my mind and I just didn't know what we were going to walk away with as far as the diagnosis. So uh, we did the whole eval and everything and she was shocked that we hadn't gotten a final diagnosis yet, that we hadn't, that no doctor picked up on it right away. Oh my ear. Uh, we had troubles getting referrals and everything, and then this year, uh, it changed that your insurance no longer needs referrals from doctors, like pediatricians to specialists, and in order to cover it. So I said, you know what? Forget the doctor, the pediatrician. I'm just going to make an appointment on my own and we're going to go because I, I'd have to do something because there's something going on more than um, sensory processing disorder. So when Trevor uh, went to the specialist, I was really impressed with how they ran their, their stuff over there. They It seemed very thorough. Um, the, the appointments are longer than 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> and uh, I felt like it was a really good place to go. And it's a highly sought after um, establishment for uh, developmental disabilities. So I decided to make an appointment there. And um, yeah, so uh, after the appointment was all done, we sat down and this is where they give you the diagnosis and the game plan. Like this is what it is and this is what we're gonna do about it and this is what we can expect for the future. So he got diagnosed with autism, um, sensory processing disorder, and ADHD, which is attention hyperactivity disorder. So now we know exactly what he has for sure. Without any doubts, there's no come back in a couple of years and we'll see then. Like this is it, we got we got the diagnosis that, you know, this is it. <laughs> so now it was time to come up with a game plan. And the game plan is we need to contact what they call DDD. It's developmental disability. No, I can't remember what it stands for. Department of Developmental Disability, I think. Anyway, so we have to contact them. They're going to do their own separate evaluation to see if he qualifies, which it would be like we would get assistance to pay for therapies and things like that. She highly suggested respite care. Uh, which is basically like a trained person to come in and watch him. We are not able to leave him with a sitter. Um, even my mom has trouble with him. So we would need someone trained uh, with uh, different disabilities and such to be able to watch him. So he cannot be in daycare, like a regular daycare setting as of right now. This is another reason why I quit my job. So. Uh, so we got to contact them. They're going to do their evaluation. I have no idea how long this is going to take. Now that we know, like, we got the diagnosis, that was one hard part, and now the next hard part is beginning, and this is where we have to fight for services and, like, really keep pushing to get it all done. Um, a lot of loops to jump through, holes, whatever. We got a lot of stuff to jump over <laughs> to get this all done. 
So we're going to have the evaluation with them, and then they're going to tell us what services they'll cover, what they won't. Um, if you need something that they won't cover, then me and Chris are going to have to find a place to do another evaluation through a different therapist and get him services through there. Our insurance will, however, start covering it now that he has a diagnosis of autism. As for before, when it was just sensory processing disorder, our insurance wouldn't cover anything. Okay, so that's one thing that we have to do. Um, the, the, the DDD office, they also deal with like respite care and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, we have to call our uh, local public school office, which I did today already. They want him to go into a special needs preschool right away. And it would, she said it would be about two and a half hours, four days a week, and they can provide services to, to him through the school as well. So they have to do their evaluation of him to see if he qualifies for that as well. And the evaluations are pushed back till the middle of September. So we have to wait before we can even begin that whole thing. And in order to make an appointment for evaluation, you actually have to go down to the office. And by the time we got out of this appointment and got home, it was too late to go down to the office. I'm gonna have to do that tomorrow. And then we can start getting him set up to go to to um, special needs preschool and they actually have one at Trevor Parker school however it might be full we don't know we won't know until that time comes so that's another um, so that's another evaluation and another thing that we're working on and then we also have to contact our insurance company and just kind of make sure that they're gonna you know work with us on all this kind of stuff um, we are switching pediatricians. I found a new pediatrician. I'm not happy with the old pediatrician because they've overlooked this for how long? And we've gone through four different pediatricians that don't listen and I'm not a picky person by any means, but I'm just gonna toss this out there. You may disagree with me and you may think it's kind of harsh, but I think Arizona has some of the worst healthcare I have ever seen in my life. We never had troubles like this. I mean, we did have some troubles when we lived in Iowa, but this has been ridiculous and just, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Uh, my son was banging his head so hard he put a hole in his dresser one day, just one big boom and his head went through the dresser and they keep saying this is all normal stuff. Um, not that he's not normal, but you get what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. And then they want him to get on fish oil um, because they, they do believe he's going to have, or already does, have a learning disability and he's kind of behind, which is what I was thinking he was. So he is behind his peers um, developmentally wise. You know, like I did a toddler something a while back and like question answers with him. And he doesn't really know his colors or his shapes, his numbers, his ABCs, all that kind of stuff. So that's why they really, really want to push him to get into a special needs preschool to prepare him for regular school when he starts kindergarten, first grade, etc. Um, that's the other thing she said. If we don't get things under control and start aggressively working with it now, it's, it's very possible that she said he would never be able to go into a public school because of behaviors. So, okay, so that's that. Um, they want him to also be on um, a very low dose of melatonin at night to try to help him sleep because he hasn't slept through the night in four years yet. I mean, here and there he'll have a good night, but he doesn't sleep through the night. Um, she also said, without a doubt, he's having night terrors. I was able to bring in video and show her, tons of video, I showed her video of what we thought were the seizures. Um, she said they looked classic partial complex seizures as well, but since they didn't show on the EEG, she just says she wants to keep an eye on it, and she says it could be a form of stimming. Um, I showed her videos of him, how he spins all the time, how he's repetitive with his questions and very loud. I showed her video of him banging his head and his vocal stuff that he does and um, what he's like in the middle of the night when he wakes up. I just made like a big long video for her to look at so that she could get a good idea of what we're seeing at home in case he didn't display this behavior at the appointment. So I was able to actually show her what we're seeing. And it was from a span of like 
two months where I just kind of picked different things and put them all together. So that, that's a good idea if you're going to an appointment like this. Try to get as much as you can on video. So, um, so yeah, as far as she did say kids with autism, 30% of the kids with autism do end up having a seizure disorder. So it's definitely something we want to keep an eye on and watch. Um, hmm. What else did she say? Feeding therapy is something she wants to look, in, look into and then social skills building, um, occupational therapy, speech therapy, etc, etc. I told her I wasn't working and she said that's a good thing because she said I'm probably not going to be able to at this point for a while and she expects him to have to be in therapies for at least a couple years. Um, and that combined with his schooling and the appointments and stuff, it's not going to be feasible for me to work. So anyway, that's kind of the gist of what's going on. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, that's really, I'm sorry to hear that or this or that. And how I kind of view it is I knew going in, I knew, I knew whatever it was. I didn't know what diagnosis he was going to get, but I really knew that it was going to be a neuro, neurological disorder. I really had my mindset that that's what it is. And it's not going to be something we can just cure. It's going to have to be treated with some sort of therapy or this or that or the other. So hearing autism didn't bother me really because I kind of like, my mind was already there. Trevor's already got autism. So we already knew what to expect on that end. And of course, every child with autism is totally different. And that goes the same for Trevor and Jackson. They are nothing alike. Their symptoms, they have some symptoms that are kind of the same, but for the most part, they're completely opposite. Um, but what it means for us now is we can get services for him and it, our insurance will start covering things for him and we can start to help him. So this was actually good news in a way and I don't want anyone to take that wrong like I wanted my kid to have autism, but it's good news in a way that we can now start helping him more than what we could do on our own. So. It's not a bad thing. Um, autism, sometimes people think of it as this horrible diagnosis to get, and it, it, it's a struggle. I'm not going to undermine that. It is a struggle. Um, it's a constant battle with certain things. Um, it can be stressful, but in my experience, it's manageable, and as long as you know what it is, it's not that bad. Um, of course, there's different levels, different areas of autism. Some are more severe than others, and I'm lucky that my kids are not that severe. So I'm just happy we have a game plan. We know what we're doing. We know what to expect, and it's going to be the next couple months of trying to get all of this stuff lined up and set up and get together and make it happen. Whew. So that's, that's everything. It was kind of a lot of information all at once, and I'm sure I'm missing out on some here. But, uh, oh, and the other thing she wants us to do is come back in three months and then again, right before his fifth birthday and they'll do another autism screening because he couldn't complete the one that they were doing today because it just, it just wasn't working with him. So right before his fifth birthday, we have to go back again and do another one and that will give us an idea of how much impairment there is there. And yeah, so that's a 13 minute video and... I should probably cut it off now. And if you have questions, I, I would love to answer them. Um, I'm very comfortable talking openly and honestly about this stuff uh, because not everybody does. So if you have questions, leave them down there in the comment section below because I, I would love to answer them for you guys. So anyway, I hope that uh, like kind of just gives you a general idea of what's going on with him. I know we've been talking about this here on my channel for over a year now we've been trying to figure out what's going on um even if you look way back to when he was like whew, five six months old when i first started my channel i had concerns way back then so this is a good thing we finally know what's going on it's a very good thing to actually have in your mind like okay we know what it is so that's it and i will talk to you guys tomorrow bye